everybody. I'm Dr. Howe. Welcome to the spring celebration of literature and languages for 2021. This has been another really hard year, but we're all just so proud of our department and our students for making it, and especially for our graduates. You made a new map for yourselves by getting through an entire senior year under the cloud of COVID-19 and in many cases, personal loss. We did it, we persisted, and we really deserve to be celebrated for that, in addition to all of our other accomplishments. So congratulations, everyone. We love you, we wish all the best for you, and we look forward to celebrating all of your accomplishments today. It's become a little bit of a tradition for us to say a few words about what we did over the past academic year as just a way of marking our history and celebrating us all. Um, so as you were finishing up your remote internships, doing your very best in your last Zoom courses, applying to jobs in graduate school, beginning to imagine your next steps in a pandemic, we were pretty active too. We launched a new BA program and a minor in digital writing and narrative design. Dr. Holly Karapetkova, Arlington's current Poet Laureate, has been advocating and reading all across the state. And she's been especially active in her collaboration with 1455 Literary Arts, a startup project over in Winchester, Virginia, fostering creative writing. Uh, I'm currently pursuing an advanced degree in data analytics and visualization at Maryland Institute College of Art. Dr. Lee Johnson's EN 230 American Voices class, which connected students at the University of Texas, Rio Grande and Marymount to share cultural experiences and celebrate Hispanic voices was featured in a news story about Marymount's new Hispanic serving institution status. And Dr. Sarah Fickey was quoted in another news story about the hit Regency romance Netflix series, Bridgerton. We also welcomed just so many speakers to campus. And uh, I have to say that's at least one thing that Zoom has going for it. Just last week, we welcomed National Book Award winning author Valeria Luiselli. She spoke with our first year students about writing and her own experience as a translator for undocumented migrant children. Other speakers included spoken word artist Tony Medina, fiction writer Tara Campbell, and poet Terry Cross Davis, who was our spring visiting poet. We are also really honored to welcome filmmaker Pamela Wolford as our 2020 Bisson lecturer in the humanities. Many, many thanks to Dr. Bess Fox, Dr. Kara Petkova, Dr. Johnson, and Dr. Fickey for organizing those events. And finally, Lynn Borton, a radio host from Arlington Independent Media, spoke with us about podcasting, finding a story, and being curious. She was our inaugural digital writing and narrative design speaker. So both Pamela and Lynn's talks are available on our YouTube site, and we're going to have brief articles about all of these speakers up on our newsletter as well, which you can subscribe to at commons.marymount.edu slash English. Last year, we reached out to our alumni for updates, and we asked them just to say a few words to our new graduating students. And so many of them replied with words of support, advice, congratulations, even videos. Um, this year, I thought, you might like some updates from former students to sort of put your journey in perspective. Janae Pickett, who graduated in 2016 with a BA in English specializing in media and performance studies, is now a native English teacher for an English program in Korea. Right now, she says that she's trying to adjust to life in South Korea, especially during a world pandemic, which is not easy. Uh, but she's most proud of leaving the United States to teach abroad. And this, she says, has been a lifelong dream of hers and has been one of the most successful decisions she's ever made. Melanie Sue, who graduated with a BA in English in 2014, uh, also in biology, she was a double major. Uh, she is now a resident physician in family medicine after receiving her MD from New York University and doing some traveling. She says that she's most proud of the wide variety of experiences that she's gathered and the people that she's met living in different areas of the country and abroad. She wrote, when I look back at the last 10 years, I'm just amazed at how much I've grown. Lindsay Murphy, who received her MA from Marymount in English and Humanities in 2012, is now an instructional designer at Portland State University. We also just learned of three new milestones. Chris Mikulski will be starting a new full-time job as a liberal arts faculty member at Savannah College of Art and Design, Dr. Chris Mikulski. And Liz Ricketts, who is also now Dr. Rickett Jones, has just finished her PhD from Florida State University. 
Finally, just heard word from Walker Valdez that he has now received his MA in special education. And so we're so, so proud of all of our alumni. These are folks who were just like you, not even 10 years ago, graduating from Marymount with a degree in English. And so what I wanna say is that your skills are in demand. You're writers, you're critical thinkers, you're savvy at teamwork and technology, you're storytellers with just a font of empathy and the ability to communicate in meaningful ways. You're always gonna be able to learn new things because your minds are agile, not locked into one path and you have a strong foundation in what it means to be human. You too, just like all of our alumni, will make your future a reality, we promise. So as you think about your next steps, I wanted to share a poem with you, something to take with you on your way. This is a poem by Joy Harjo, our current National Poet Laureate and the first Native American Poet Laureate in the history of the position. She was just recently honored, I think earlier today, with um, today, today, <laughs> with a very rare third term as Poet Laureate. So this is a poem that speaks for me of resilience, of history, and the trauma of history, of making mistakes, and making your own way into the future. A Map to the Next World by Joy Harjo for Desiree Kiara Chi. In the last days of the fourth world, I wished to make a map for those who would climb through the hole in the sky. My only tools were the desires of humans as they emerged from the killing fields, from the bedrooms and the kitchens. For the soul is a wanderer with many hands and feet. The map must be of sand and can't be read by ordinary light. It must carry fire to the next tribal town for renewal of spirit. In the legend are instructions on the language of the land, how it was we forgot to acknowledge the gift as if we were not in it or of it. Take note of the proliferation of supermarkets and malls, the altars of money. They best describe the detour from grace. Keep track of the errors of our forgetfulness. The fog steals our children while we sleep. Flowers of rage spring up in the depression. Monsters are born there of nuclear anger. Trees of ashes wave goodbye to goodbye and the map appears to... Trees of ashes wave goodbye to goodbye and the map appears to disappear. We were no longer... We no longer know the names of the birds here, how to speak them by their personal names. Once we knew everything in this lush promise. What I am telling you is real and is printed in a warning on the map. Our forgetfulness stalks us, walks the earth behind us, leaving a trail of paper diapers, needles, and wasted blood. An imperfect map will have to do, little one. The place of entry is the sea of your mother's blood, your father's small death as he longs to know himself in another. There is no exit. The map can be interpreted through the wall of the intestine, a spiral on the road of knowledge. You will travel through the membrane of death, smell cooking from the encampment where our relatives make feast of fresh deer meat and corn soup in the Milky Way. They have never left us. We abandon them for science. And when you take your next breath as we enter our fifth world, there will be no X, no guidebook with words you can carry. You will have to navigate by your mother's voice, renew the song she is singing. Fresh courage glimmers from planets and lights the map printed with the blood of history, a map you will have to know by your intention, by the language of sons. When you emerge, note the tracks of the monster slayers where they entered the cities of artificial light and killed what was killing us. You will see red cliffs. They are the hearts contain the ladder a white deer will greet you when the last human climbs from the destruction. Remember the hole of shame marking the act of abandoning our tribal grounds. We were never perfect, yet the journey we make together is perfect on this earth, who was once a star and made the same mistakes as humans. We might make them again, she said. Crucial to finding the way is this. There is no beginning or end. You must make your own map.
Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Kara Petkova, and I am so excited to be celebrating the end of this academic year with you. In fact, I can't remember another academic year. I was so excited to see come to an end. It's been a real doozy, I know, and I just want to say a huge congratulations to all of you, including my fellow faculty members, for making it through in any way we could. But we've survived. We're here. We've got vaccines. The summer is coming. And I'm very hopeful that things are looking up. I also have the great pleasure of introducing our outstanding undergraduate student for 2021. And I also want to recognize all of our undergraduate majors who are graduating this year, because the truth is they are all outstanding. You, our students, are why we do what we do. And we're so grateful for your hard work and your positive presence in our department over the past several years, but particularly in this past really difficult year. One of our graduating seniors this year is Joanna Fitzpatrick. She's an amazing writer, thinker, and classmate dedicated to serving the community and who's made our Marymount community so much better for her presence. Please check out her awesome poem in this year's copy of Blue Ink at commons.marymount.edu forward slash blue ink forward slash. And there's also a lot of other amazing work from your fellow students. Alicia Hobson, another of our graduating students, brought her military career and significant life experiences to our department. And she also brought tremendous energy and enthusiasm to her classes. And I have to be honest, without Alicia's help as our student worker, especially in putting together events, I'm not sure I would have survived this year. So thank you, Alicia. Jordan Lawton is also graduating this year. Jordan's presence always brightens my day. His positive energy and engagement fill every class to the brim, and he gives unassumingly of himself to his peers, faculty, and everyone around him. Jordan, we have been so grateful for your presence in our department. And finally, our outstanding undergraduate student this year is Kimberly McNeil Thompson. Both in the classroom and out, she lives out her dedication to education, social justice, and the good of others. She's constantly seeking ways to make a difference in the world. She's interned with the Virginia Coalition Against Human Trafficking. She attended the Virginia Federation for Independent Colleges Women's Leadership Conference, and she's been recognized for her creative writing in a variety of venues, including Blue Ink and the Faculty Student Poetry Reading. Her passion for and devotion to the MU community has manifested itself in so many ways, from her student work and career services to her advocacy for a more inclusive campus community as recognized by the Apolloni Inclusive Excellence Award. Thank you, all of you, from the bottom of my heart for being the wonderful people you are. We've been so fortunate to get to know you and work with you. Please keep in touch, let us know how we can help you and know that whatever insanity the world has in store for us, and yes, we've seen plenty of insanity over the past year, you are ready to do amazing things. You do have the power to make this world a better place in large ways and small. All the best to all of you as you go forward. We will miss you. Hi, everyone. My name is Eric Norton. Uh, in, in the fall of 2020, I had the pleasure of teaching our senior seminar course. Uh, it's a course that we use as a capstone for the experience for our majors and minors. And it's a course that uh, we assign a theme to each time we teach it that varies um, following the instructor uh, that's teaching it. So we all take turns, us faculty, and um, in, the, in the fall I taught it with a uh, focus on eco-critical approaches to literature. Um, basically just sort of uh, reading and thinking and writing about um, what significance representations of the natural environment and animals and um, landscapes and things like that um, have to say about a work of art, um, work of writing, a piece of writing. You know, my only regret this time around is that we weren't able to meet face to face and um, 
have a somewhat no more normal experience. Um, be that as it may, uh, the students, all of the students in the course this time, really uh, did a great job um, dealing with that um, sort of new atmosphere that we've all been dealing with and, and really um, producing some work that just um, really, really impressed me. Each semester, um, each year that we teach the senior seminar course, we also um, award the um, Evelyn Ludlow Award to the best essay um, as judged blindly by all of the faculty um, who teach in our English program, except for myself, because um, I might be biased, I set this one out. And the other faculty um, who teach English, um, they didn't know who the authors were and they read through all of the essays and picked one that they felt um, best represented uh, really, really excellent work um, that we expect out of this course and, and out of our um, English students. Now, uh, this is not to say that they were not also impressed um, by all of the papers uh, that came out of this class, and they, they made a special note to me that um, they, they were really, really impressed with, with everyone's work here. Um, so I want to say first how much I appreciate that um, from you students who were in that class, and you know who you were, um, and, and how impressed that I was. Without further ado, here's the um, the winner of this year's Evelyn Ludlow Award um, for the best essay in the senior seminar course in English um, is uh, Jordan Lawton for his essay, uh, Nothing is More Perishable, Nature, Transiency, and the Soul in Marilyn Robinson's Housekeeping. So I want to say congratulations to Jordan, yay, and to all those other students um, who took the course in the fall, um, and to everyone here uh, as we're celebrating um, uh, graduation of many of you. Um, okay, again, congratulations everyone, and enjoy um, this time, uh, enjoy the spring, um, and let's look forward to some more normal times where I would be saying all of these things to you face to face. All right. Take care, everyone. Congratulations, all Marymount graduates this year, and also to our amazing Magnificat editorial staff and authors. Magnificat is Marymount's Journal of Undergraduate Nonfiction Writing, and this year we have 10 awesome undergraduate essays published, in addition to two essays from our inaugural high school essay contest. Every year we award the Robert Reed Award for Excellence in Nonfiction Writing to the best essays in Magnificat. Robert Reed was an adjunct at Marymount who specialized in nonfiction writing and journalism. And this award is a memory to his legacy in promoting excellence in nonfiction writing. This year we have two winners. Our first winner is Tulanga Matwali for her essay, Honest Care Through Trust which is about the importance in theory and practice of a trusting relationship between nurses and patients. And our second winner is Charlotte Lee Marquise for her essay, Citizen Complicity in Nazi Germany, which explores the ways that the Nazis encouraged the citizens to be compliant with their genocidal agenda through social and political means. Congratulations to both Charlotte Lee and to Wanga for their excellent work and to all of our Magnificat authors. And I'm going to pass this over to Dr. Peebles, who will talk about our high school essay winners. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. Uh, in particular, we were glad to have uh, such a good response to our first ever uh, high school essay competition. Uh, and we are publishing uh, two excellent essays. And the authors went through the same uh, review and editorial process uh, to make their essays uh, publishable uh, and, and really, really excellent. The interesting thing is both essays uh, deal with the theme of loss, although losses of different kinds, um, and what kind of uh, triumph or uh, redemption can come out of those losses. Uh, the winner is uh, Sophie Abner for her essay, The Best. Um, and our second place winner is Jera Rocha for her essay, My Losses Led Me Home. So congratulations to both of those authors and to everyone who submitted. You can read Magnificat online at commons.marymount.edu slash Magnificat. 
We'd like also to take a little bit of time to recognize our graduating minors who help flesh out our department and um, make it the awesome place that it is. We have six graduating minors this year uh, in disciplines ranging from literature to writing to languages. So first up is Ava Brooks, who is graduating this year with a BA in biology and a literature minor. We also have Meredith Laubach, who is graduating with a BA in fashion design and a minor in writing. Mahele Mehari is graduating this year with a BS in biochemistry, and she is a French minor as well. Judy Ortega is graduating with a BS in health sciences, uh, and she is minoring in Spanish. Justin Sursik, who's graduating with a BA in politics, is also uh, being awarded a French minor. And finally, Grace Tamaro, who's graduating this year with a BA in biology, is also graduating with a writing minor. Congratulations to you all. And finally, I wanted to take just a brief moment to acknowledge the extraordinarily hard work that our two student workers have put into making our department what it is this year and last year as well. They've been with us for two years. So I wanna thank Alicia Hobson and Jordan Lawton. Uh, both are English majors and both have made um, my job so much easier. They've made the department work so much more smoothly and uh, they are to thank for our social media feeds and for our Takeover Tuesdays and for all of the PDFs that you were able to use in your classes this year, faculty, and for any research projects that you had them work with you on. Um, they've just been fantastic and uh, I really can't thank them enough. So um, I hope you'll all join me in a bit of a round of applause for Alicia and Jordan, who uh, just went above and beyond. And we're so, so very grateful to have had them working with us for the past two years. So yay. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Jordan. You've been fantastic. Hello, MA graduates in English and Humanities, it's Dr. Ficky, and I'm happy to congratulate all of you on successfully wrapping up what has been another challenging year. You have persevered and we're proud of all of your accomplishments. Before I announce our Outstanding Graduate Student Award, I'd like to say a few words about every graduate from this year who have worked so hard and achieved so much. Nuf Alafandi worked with Dr. Jessica Tynes to explore strategies for successful English language learning and communication in her thesis, International Students Intercultural Communication in the US and How COVID-19 Pandemic Affects Their Social and Academic Lives, which she defended this spring. Nora Almazroa also studied language learning, though across different age groups. She worked with Dr. Bess Fox on her thesis, the factors that affect second language acquisition with a focus on the difference between children and adults' ability in learning a new language, which she defended in December. And now it's my pleasure to announce this year's winners of our Outstanding Graduate Student Award. We are honoring two graduating students this year, Michael Weeks and Lauren Zwickerowski. Both Michael and Lauren excelled academically and actively contributed to the life and community of our department. Michael Weeks graduated in December, his thesis, titled The Myth of White Supremacy and the Challenge for America to Confront Its Reality in the Work and Words of James Baldwin, is a timely and thoughtful engagement with the work of one of America's most significant authors. In addition to successfully defending his thesis, Michael brought his expertise into the classroom as a guest speaker in Dr. Johnson's class, where he led the undergraduates in a discussion about Baldwin's writing. Lauren Zwickerowski is on track to graduate this summer after completing a practicum in writing instruction through our partnership with Northern Virginia Community College. In addition to pursuing her own studies, Lauren has worked in a support role for several of our first year composition classes and writing labs and lent her time and energy to admissions events and outreach to incoming students. Congratulations, Michael and Lauren on your outstanding work. Noof, Nora, Michael and Lauren, it's been a pleasure to work with you inside and outside of class over the past semesters. Your thoughtfulness, curiosity, and energetic pursuit of learning is valued by all of your professors here at Marymount and will hopefully serve you well in whatever it is you choose to do next. Stay in touch 
and know that we are always cheering for you. And now is the time of our program that we're all waiting for and we're all excited about. Uh, we have two guest speakers, former students at Marymount, um, alumni, just like you, whom we've asked back to share their experience, their insights, their wisdom uh, since having graduated Marymount with a degree in English. So Carlos Benavides, who graduated in the class of 2009, and the Reverend Amanda Bourne, who graduated in the class of 2016. Uh, Carlos is now an associate attorney at Icard Law PC, and the Reverend Bourne is now a curate at the Diocese of North Carolina, part of their Reimagining Curacies program. We are delighted to have these two spectacular people uh, back with us to share their insight with you. So without further ado, Carlos Benavides and the Reverend Amanda Bourne. Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Bourne and I graduated from Marymount University in 2016 with a major in English, Medium Performance Studies and a minor in Theology and Religious Studies. What have I been doing since graduation? Um, in the year or two before I graduated, I'd begun to explore the possibility of working in the church or even in um, even being ordained in my Christian denomination, which is the Episcopal Church. That process takes a long time in my tradition, so when I graduated, I immediately embarked on a gap year during that gap year, I did a time of service through the Episcopal Service Corps, which is a little bit like AmeriCorps or other domestic service programs. During that year, I lived alongside a monastic community with other interns uh, living in a monastery in Boston. Um, and so I spent a year living in intentional community. After my year as a monastery intern, I started my Master of Divinity at Virginia Theological Seminary in Alexandria, Virginia. In order to get a Master of Divinity, you spend three years in the program. It's primarily humanities and social studies based. So there's a lot of theology and history classes in addition to a lot of practical classes and internships and sort of skills-based material. I took a lot of history and theology classes and ended up writing my master's thesis on the relationship between the discernment of spirits in medieval mystics and their theology um, and how that relates to the prefaces of early modern English women translators. After graduating from that program in 2020, I took the job that I'm still in today in North Carolina, where I work as a curate. A curate in the church is a little bit like a doctor after they've finished med school and they go on often to do a medical residency. That's basically what a curate is. You're done with school, you're ordained, but you're still sort of in a learning phase. So that's a bit about me, but I'd like to tell you a bit about how my experience of being an English major has mattered to my journey. As you might guess, there's a lot that goes into being a parish priest in the Episcopal Church, and it requires a lot of adaptable skills. I have to know how to write different genres, how to speak different genres, and often have to do so at rather short notice. The many writing classes that I took at Marymount, as well as public speaking classes and opportunities, have really allowed me to be adaptable and to use those skills in so many ways. That adaptability allows me to write a sermon one morning and then write a lesson plan in the afternoon for my formation group that evening, um, and also type out a descriptive blurb for the parish email while I'm at it. So three different genres of writing all in one day. The critical thinking and revision skills that I learned through so many peer review sessions 
and review sessions with faculty have also taught me a lot that's really important for my job. As an English major, I learned how to sort of give constructive feedback and read a person's piece of writing for their unique voice and give comments that don't try to sort of abolish that voice or overshadow them. The bringing out of a writer's unique voice is the same thing I do as a priest. For instance, when someone comes to me with a great idea that's born out of their own loves and passions, and it's just not quite something that fits in with where the rest of the community is at. So then I have a conversation with them where I have the opportunity to wonder and say, what an incredible idea and what passion you have. And here's what the community is doing. And I wonder where your idea might fit into that. And how can we work together with the community to accomplish this goal that you and we have together? It's not about saying no, but it's inviting people to refine their ideas. It's revision, but actively in conversation with a lot of listening. I could say so much more. I could talk about how my interdisciplinary track, Media and Performance Studies, gave me so many skills that allow me to dip into those communication skills in Photoshop and Premiere Pro, which I was just working in, or how my work in the Wrench Library has given me incredible research skills that I use all the time for a variety of different purposes. I could talk about how all my seminary classmates came to me for help with their resumes and cover letters because Dr. Rippey taught me how to write them. But ultimately, my English major has given me skills that allow me to be flexible, interdisciplinary, and articulate. Whether I'm giving a sermon or speaking one-on-one -on -one to a parishioner in a pastoral care conversation, guiding a group of lay leaders in their work, or just doing administrative work. Although you might not be religious or called to do any sort of work in a similar context, um, my context is similar to a lot of nonprofit work that I know English majors tend to do. So as you work on figuring out what your next step is, my advice to you is in the form of a quote by the Presbyterian preacher Frederick Buechner. He writes that the, the place where God calls you is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. I hope you know that your experience as an English major or minor has given you the tools to ask serious questions about yourself and the world around you. The tools that you now carry with you allow you to find that place where your gladness and the world's hunger will meet. Congratulations on your graduation. Good afternoon, class of 2021. My name is Carlos Ignacio Benavides IV. I graduated from Marymount University back in 2009 with a degree in English and philosophy. And like many of you here today, I wasn't sure exactly what I would do next. And so I figured, why not become a lawyer? And I don't even have to practice law if I don't want to. And that's how I found myself at St. Mary's School of Law. And after I graduated, I received a phone call to ask whether or not I would be willing to be a prosecutor in South Texas. And for many years, I did that. I accepted a position and became a prosecutor in South Texas and was able to pursue justice in what I felt was a meaningful way by giving many people second chances and pursuing what I considered the more violent criminals in society and trying to reform justice where possible on nonviolent offenders and others that perhaps were stuck in a systemic cycle that they could not break from. And I have to tell you that my English degree came in handy so much there at the DA's office because I feel like I had lived 
a thousand lives through all of the novels and literature and everything that my life had been enriched by through books. If I have any advice to offer you, it's that when we find ourselves in a place like we do today, or we did this last year, with such division amongst ourselves as countrymen and women, that you not let it smother you, that you not become suffocated by the division. A professor once told me when I felt overwhelmed by how little we had progressed as philosophy students, that I needed to find one little problem and then look for one little question within that problem and focus on that one singular question, that solitary thread in the hopes that maybe I could work to unravel it or unravel it in my lifetime so that the next person that came after me could take up the next piece and slowly over time unravel the entirety of the problem. I may have not changed the entire legal system during my time as a prosecutor, but I believe that I truly helped the people that came through my office, that I did pursue justice in a meaningful way, that I performed and acted in the way in which I spoke and inspired my colleagues to pursue similar courses of action. And I believe that I gave closure to many people that were wronged in some way and needed justice. And that's all we can really hope for, whether we're teachers, lawyers, doctors, whatever we are, is that our time is meaningful in that it helps others and that it puts some good into the world. In whatever manner we're able, able to deliver it, I can tell you without a doubt that the professors at Marymount University put so much meaningful good into me as I know they have into many of you. And it is because of them in part that I have been successful in my career, that I now have my own private practice and I pursue a profession that brings me joy and that has brought others joy in what I've been able to accomplish for them. So with that, I say congratulations to every single one of you for seeing this goal through to today, despite how difficult this last year has been. And I wish you every best of luck in your endeavors. So as we conclude our spring celebration for 2021, um, this is Anna, she's gonna hang out with us for a little bit. I wanted to leave you with one more poem by Ha Jin. Uh, this is a poem called A Center. It was published in uh, 2018 in his uh, collection of poems from Copper Canyon Press called A Distant Center. You must hold your quiet center where you do what only you can do. If others call you a maniac or fool, just let them wag their tongues. If some praise your perseverance, don't feel too happy about it. Only solitude is a lasting friend. You must hold your distant center. Don't move even if earth and heaven quake. If others think you are insignificant, that's because you haven't held on long enough. As long as you stay put year after year, eventually you will find a world beginning to revolve around you. We wish you all the best. Stay in touch with us. Check in on Anna every once in a while and uh, we'll continue to check in on you. Thank you.